Hi everyone, Kate Cargo here. I'm the principal of Walker Station Elementary in Fort Bend ISD. I am here to speak to you as parents to help you prepare for the shift to online learning. As you know, teachers are experts in managing classrooms full of 22 and sometimes more students. And when we move to online learning, that responsibility shifts from the teacher to the parent because you are the adult at home monitoring those students through their learning experience. Well, teachers receive extensive training on how to manage behaviors, tips, tricks, and they have lots of experience in that. And I realize that you might not have that experience. So I've put together this video to have 10 tips for you for how to help make your online learning experience a success. And when you think about behavior, I don't want you to think about good behavior or bad behavior. When we talk about behavior at school, we're really talking about those good work habits. We're talking about cooperation and motivation. So some of these tips will help you all stay focused and motivated as we go through the online learning experience together. My first tip for you is to create an environment that is kid-friendly, welcoming, and conducive to learning. I know your environment is your home environment right now, and that environment for kids means that it's playtime. So one thing to consider is having a separate space for free play and time to be kids, whereas learning is gonna take place in a different setting. If you think about a classroom, a teacher can do amazing things within the four walls of their classroom. They have a library corner, they have a sit on the floor and read space, they have desk work, it's very flexible and kids are moving to different parts of the room all day long. My second tip for you is to be very honest with your students and communicate the expectations for them. Students want to know what are we doing and how long will this take and what do I have to do? So having that communication with them to start, if you haven't shared the new model for school and talked to them about having online school experience, now's the time. You also wanna be honest about the work that they'll do and how they'll interact with their teachers. This is the time where you set your expectations. The students cannot read your minds and they do not know everything that you know that's come through in emails and communication from the district. So they're really relying on you to communicate that with them. My third tip for you is to be consistent with those expectations every school day. So you're gonna to have to decide in your own family what works for you best. It might be a daily schedule, it might be a checklist of things to do. You might decide that all your children are gonna do school at the same time or that you need to stagger their times to give them different attention and sharing resources. So whatever those expectations are for you and your home, you wanna make sure that you're consistent with that. And I said a school day for a reason. The boundaries get very blurred now that we're at home more often than we've probably ever been. So make sure that a school day is separate from a weekend day so that everyone can get the break that they need. We also have some holidays coming up so make sure that we're recognizing those holidays and taking a break from school, just like the calendar would suggest. My next tip for you is to be prepared. Now parents, you don't have to prepare the lessons. Those lessons are coming from the teacher. But if you know that a child's gonna need a computer or they're gonna wanna write something down or you're going to need to give them some attention, be prepared for their learning time. Students are not always the most patient. I think we have seen that in the last couple weeks. So make sure that when it is time for them to get down to school business, that you're ready for them to support them in doing that. All right, my next tip for you is to actively monitor their learning. So the analogy I have for you is to think about cooking. And if you had a pot boiling on the stove, you couldn't just leave it until the whole dish was done. You would have to monitor it. So our kids are just like boiling water. Some of them need more supervision than others. Some of them will, it'll depend on the activity, how much you have to monitor. So make sure that you're actively monitoring and keeping an eye on them. If you just say it's work time and walk away, 
it is highly unlikely that everything will get done uh, without any adult supervision. Teachers are constantly checking in on students, monitoring them, and bouncing between all of their students. My next tip for you is a big one, and I hope that you take it to heart. We are gonna have to keep learning with our students. So if they get to a challenge and they go to you for help and you say, I don't know what to do, then it will make them feel unsupported and a little frightened about what's ahead. So my ask of you is to be a lifelong learner and join them with it. Having a growth mindset means adding the littlest word to the end of that sentence. And it might be, I don't know how to do that yet. We talk a lot about the power of yet with a growth mindset, and that really helps us learn together. And it's okay to not have all the answers, but there are solutions and we wanna help our students work through those solutions. With that, parents, you are very influential into their schooling and their attitude towards school. So I would ask that every parent model respect toward the teacher, the assignments they're giving, and the other responses from the peers. This is a very new time for both teachers and students. So we wanna make sure that we are giving each other some grace and letting each other learn through this together. If students hear their parent disrespect the teacher or disregard something they're doing, then it gives the student acceptance or allows them to not show respect to the teacher. So I will ask all of you to make sure that you're modeling that respect and helping the teacher reinforce what the expectations are as we move forward with online learning. All right, tip number eight is a big one. It is to stay calm, to avoid power struggles. Students are not robots. I say that all the time. They are looking for us to stay calm. One of the biggest things you can do to help stay calm is to refer back to those expectations that you set. Don't make it personal about the student and don't make it about them complying with what you're saying. If you go back to the expectations, it will really help give them a consistent framework for what they're going to have to do. Now tip number nine is one of my, my favorites and something that I really enjoy engaging in at school. So. The tip number nine is to debrief after you have that conflict. Conflicts are in inevitable. It might be that the student just got really down on themselves because they didn't feel like they could complete a task, or it might be that you did get in a power struggle with your child. That's okay, it happens to all of us. And I'm gonna give you an example of how you might debrief after, some, after a situation with a child. So let's say you tell your child that it's reading time and instead of doing their independent reading, they throw the book across the room and run outside and say, I don't wanna read. Well, this is the perfect time to talk to them about what expectations are set and what behaviors they could do instead of throwing the book across the room and running outside. So an example could be, all right, sweetheart, when I said that it was reading time and you threw the book across the room and ran outside, that did not meet the expectations. In the future, if you need a break or you're feeling overwhelmed, you need to ask me for a break or tell me you're feeling overwhelmed. That way we can come up with a solution together. It's not always as easy as it seems and there's never a perfect script to follow, um, but really talking the student through what behavior or what action they did that doesn't meet your expectation or is not how it should and giving a replacement behavior. A replacement behavior is so important because kids don't have the same experiences that we have as an adult. And sometimes they don't know what they should ask or how they should communicate their feelings. There are going to be feelings of frustration coming up, probably on all of our, our parts. And the better we communicate what our needs and wants are with the people that we're interacting with, the more successful online learning from home will be. My last tip for you, tip number 10, is to celebrate the success. And when I say celebrate the success, this can be the smallest thing. It could be that your child logged on to an, a platform for the first time. It could be that they completed an assignment without your assistance. 
if you were ever spent the day in an elementary school, you would hear teachers praising children all day long for the littlest things. It could be that they liked the way someone lined up to go to lunch. It could be that someone remembered to put their name on their paper. The smallest things are always celebrated at school because that's how we reinforce that they happen over and over again. So those are 10 tips for you as we shift into the new age of online learning. I hope that these are helpful and I hope that it just gives you a framework to kind of set up the next week ahead. For us, we're spending the week ahead setting expectations with students and really just engaging them online. After that, we're gonna move forward into the real content of learning. So parents, this was a crash course in classroom management. Teachers have actual classes on this, practice and trainings every year, no matter how long they've taught, and it's still a work in progress and every child is different. So I wish you the best of luck. I am here to help. Please reach out to me if you need anything at all. Take care.